everybody. As Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, we're often told that we are the problem. Now, I want you to remember that throughout this talk, and I want to talk to you about this country's move from overt racism to systematic oppression or institutionalised racism. And I want to walk you through exactly how to steal Aboriginal human rights from right under their noses. And the reason I'm doing this is because until we understand how our government is structured and how our society is structured and the oppression that takes place every day towards Aboriginal people, we're never going to be able to confront these issues properly. Now, the first step I want to talk about is branding, defining the Aboriginal. What is an Aboriginal? What does it mean? Right now, our stereotype tells us that we're drug addicts, we're homeless, unemployed, we're lazy, criminals, we're violent and aggressive, alcoholics and pedophiles. And it's worth noting here that during the 1990s, in a debate with Pauline Hanson, Charlie Perkins made the strong statement that behind Germany, the highest consumers of alcohol in the world are in fact white Australians. It's also worth noting that the pedophile rings that we were accused of having in the Northern Territory, which started the Northern Territory intervention under the Howard government, was in fact proven completely false by investigative journalist John Pilger soon after the fact. Yet, the Howard, the Rudd, the Gillard, the Rudd again, and now the Abbott government have continued to hold their strong stance towards the Northern Territory intervention, relabeling re it the Northern Territory emergency response. But we're the problem. The next step I want to talk to you about is breaking down the morale of Aboriginal people. Now, this is done through well-known media outlets that we all know very well. Sydney Morning Herald, The Age, The Daily Telegraph, The Australian. And a lot of the time, all it depicts are the negative stereotypes of Aboriginal people. It shows the violence and the drunken behaviour. It shows the homeless on the street. Things that are in any society on Earth, but we're focused in on. And in fact, this is what causes the highest rates of suicide in the world. Our Aboriginal children are growing up hating themselves for being black because they're so embarrassed by what they see in the media that they don't want any affiliation with it. But we're the problem. Unanimity is the next step. Insist that the Aboriginal people decide as a people collectively and reach consensus on what to do with the state of Indigenous affairs at the moment. Now, this will never happen. Unfortunately, it hasn't happened in any society that I know about. It hasn't even happened in this society as a democracy. Nobody reaches consensus. There's also a misconception that if an Aboriginal person stands up and says something, then that means that we all believe it and we all stand by it. Now, that in itself is flawed. It's like saying that if you vote Labor or the Greens, then Tony Abbott still represents everything you say because you may be both white. I don't like these ideas of double standards in our society towards my people, but we're the problem. The next step is to exercise the full extent of the law. Now, what does this mean? This means locking up an Aboriginal person for something that could be an infringement or a Section 10 or a simple fine, driving with no headlights, offensive language in public. Now, this may all seem like a bit of a joke and, you know, it's not really seen a lot in the public eye, but we make up 2.7 of the population in this country, yet we make up 30% of the prison population. We make up 48% of the juvenile justice system. 50 years after the Freedom Ride of 1965, I visited Dubbo Juvenile Correctional Centre, and 99% of inmates were young Aboriginal youth. From the year 2000 to 2007, there were 701 deaths in custody, and in 1991, a Royal Commission was conducted into deaths in custody. And since then, it's actually increased by 150%. No recommendations have been followed. There's been a lot of stigmatisation on the US right now for police brutality against black people. Everybody's heard about it. And it's a well-known statistic that a black person in the US is six times more likely to end up in jail than a white person. But in this country, our very own country, an Aboriginal person is actually 14 times more likely to end up in jail as of 2009. 
and a whopping 52 times more likely in the state of Western Australia. Yet, while doubling the national deficit, the government has also cut funding to the Aboriginal Medical Service, the Aboriginal Legal Service, and Aboriginal Housing Organisations. But where the problem? Encourage the Aboriginal to take it to court. This is a very expensive and long, time-wasting process. Most of us are going to end up out of pocket after court because we're going to lose. The odds are inherently stacked against us. Don't forget that this is not our law. This law came into the country that we know and was used to systematically oppress Aboriginal people for the last 229 years. But when a verdict is reached, everybody walks out feeling like justice has been served, feeling like the magistrate has done a good job in assessing the court, in assessing the matter, and nobody says anything else. But we're the problem. The use of pacifiers is also a brilliant example of how to steal Aboriginal human rights. A pacifier is something that is like, it's a symbolic gesture. It's tokenism. Native title is a good example of this. Dr Gary Foley from the University of Melbourne says that native title is the lowest form of land ownership under the Commonwealth. Native title is not land rights. It says, we're going to acknowledge you as the traditional owners, but we'll take all the land and resources and use it for our benefit anyway. Mining for example, but we're the problem. And the last step is the gradual removal of rights. Take rights away a little bit by little bit so no one seems to notice. Started in the Northern Territory, we now have the closures in the Western Australia communities. We have the second stolen generation spanning from the state of South Australia right up through to the Northern Tablelands of New South Wales. And we've just seen the introduction of the basics card in Western Sydney which is a card that allows the government to actually tell you exactly how to spend your money. And this isn't affecting just Aboriginal people, this is affecting a lot of other ethnic minority groups, and it's only being rolled out to their demographic. So if you can see these systematic structures that are in place right now, with the oppression that's going on for the last two centuries, and you see what I see in our society, then I want you to step back and ask yourself, are we really the problem? <laughs>